The husk forged in the sun by Superman. Wings created by Green Lantern. The speed force drawn in by Flash. Aquaman made it fishy. Or this is the screw. It's, it's the Hellbat. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today we're looking at how I made the Hellbat helmet. It is more reminiscent of the Azrael Batman armor, but if you paint it all black, throw a red visor on there, it could be easily mistaken for the Hellbat, and that's actually what I thought it was for a while when I got my hands on the file. But today, I wanna to take you through the process of how I made this and how I got this super nice gloss black finish. I love this helmet. Iron Man, I mean Batman, he is just, you know, I know a lot of you guys are constantly asking me to make Batman stuff, but the way I look at it, he doesn't really have too many cool armors. Now, if you look at something like Iron Man, there's tons of renditions, there's tons of armors, tons of helmets all through the comics. Batman stuff kind of stays the same, but ever since I saw the Hellbat or the Azrael armor, I've, I've just fallen in love with it. It is such a cool, unique helmet, and I'm super happy with how this helmet turned out. So come along with me. We're going to go back in time a little bit. I'm going to show you the process I went through to get this, the paint, the preps, all that fun stuff. And there might be a cool little surprise at the end. This isn't the only helmet I made. Let's take a look. Well, to 3D print something, you kind of need a 3D file. So first, we're going to look at the files I got that are actually Pepecura files, but he had converted them into a 3D printable um, STL, and they work just great. 15 bucks is kind of a steal for this file, if I'm being honest. And when you get it, this is what it's going to look like. Now, it does have a little cover for the back of the neck. I didn't end up printing that because it's just going to complicate how I want to put the helmet on, and you don't even notice that it's missing, but that's totally up to you if you want to print it. Just make sure if you scale the helmet up, you, just, you then scale up the little back neck part, but it's so small, like I said, you're not going to notice. But the first thing I'm going to need to do is try to figure out what scale and size I need to print this at. Now, first looking at it, it does have a very narrow opening in the back of the head. It's not like a Mandalorian helmet. Where a normal Mando helmet is going to be the same size from the opening all the way to the head, this is going to fit as long as my head can get into this opening, and I'll know that it fits me or not. A helmet like this is more akin to something like the Samus helmet, where the opening in the bottom is more narrow and tapered, but obviously once your head's in the helmet, you have tons of room. It doesn't matter how big the helmet is on the outside, where your ears and nose and all that fits, if you can't get the helmet on, it doesn't matter. So this helmet just perfectly fits me, and this is the 100% scale Samus, Samus helmet from DO3D. So if I use this file as a comparison and kind of scale them next to each other and getting this opening about the same, it should work out, right? Now I've gone and imported the Mandalorian helmet and you can see the size and all we also have the Samus helmet and right off the bat, I don't know what I messed up on and you're gonna see in a little bit um, in the next clips of the video that I guess I sucked at scaling this originally and printed it just a little bit too small. You'll, you'll see. But this is the size of it and I will tell you I ended up going to about 135% and it's perfect. I have a 24 inch circumference head and it could not fit me any better. So let's scale this up to 135% and you're gonna see how big it jumps. That looks much better. Now, if I go and center the Samus helmet on it and I start to move it around, you need to really pay attention to the bottoms and the collision areas. So we're gonna line up the back of the helmet where the opening is, kind of like that over here, and then we're gonna move the helmets through each other, but those match up really nicely. I can live with that. And I kind of, I know the secret already. I know this is the perfect scale. Um, so I'm okay with that. But definitely having a reference of a helmet that fits your head beautifully is always a good thing to have. Now, even at this scale, you are gonna need a rather large print bed to hit this with one shot. I did print it on my Ender 5 Plus and my Solval SV03, 350 by 350 by 400 bed, and I have to tilt it sideways. Now, if you have something smaller, maybe like an Ender 3, you are gonna have to cut this helmet up significantly. I definitely don't recommend going through high detail spots right here um, in Mesh Mixer. I do have tutorials on that, and I'll make sure I'll link that down below, but you are gonna need to slice this up. It might not be the worst idea to cut the helmet right down the middle, because when you fuse those bits together, you can kind of sand them into a point, almost like you're sharpening a blade. So that actually might 
make repairing it a lot easier. You could cut it straight down the middle and then probably somewhere along the eye line might not be a bad idea. And then maybe just one hack right across the back. Maybe even turning it into something like a Power Ranger helmet wouldn't be a bad idea where it folds in and out from your face and you could just put some clasps or magnets on it. So definitely take that in consideration. I have tons of settings tutorials and what's to, what to look for. I did just up recently upload a video on support blocking and settings and densities and speeds and all of that fun stuff. So I'll also link that down below. Those are two great videos to watch to print this to the best of your abilities, but it is definitely a helmet you can one shot. You don't need supports inside of it. I promise you can support block them out and then you can print this, get it on the printer. Um, I did about a 10% infill and it worked great. So get this printed and I'm gonna show you guys how to finish it. Let's go take a look. Real quick, before we hop into the garage, guys, if you could please subscribe to the channel, it would help out a lot. And please don't forget to enable all notifications. This way you stay up to date on all the videos I post, the tutorials, the build guides, the reviews, and anything I feel like making. So here is the Hellbat printed. It came out really, really nice. I'm actually really impressed. It finished in one shot. I did use a little bit of supports in the center, but the ears printed great. All the sharp edges and angles. Yeah, this came out really good, except it, uh, it's a little small and it doesn't fit. Now I know, I know I should have done like a sizing or scaling ring first or whatever, but I did match this up size wise to my Mark 85 helmets. And if I put this next to it, you can see that it's actually pretty much the same size, not too much uh, smaller. And there is some free room on this one. However, it's just the hole that your head goes in. That was, it's just shaped differently. And this is at 120%. This one, however, is at 135%. And I don't know why I went with 135%, but it's perfect. 135 is the perfect size for this helmet for me. So I definitely have to remember that. And then I am glad that I went and printed it in a matte black PLA because this looks pretty sick. Just how it's sitting. Uh, I would, I'd honestly just wear this with like a red, red lens, but we're not gonna settle with uh, mediocrity. We're gonna make this thing even better. So let's get to uh, sanding and painting. This is the gloss coated Hellbat with the 1K clear coat. And then I went and made a special gold version and that's just the standard Rust-Oleum metallic gold and the 1K clear coat. So let's take a minute to talk about clear coats. This is a really big point to talk about when doing projects like this. Everybody wants that really nice shiny clear coat and I've talked about it in a bunch of videos, but again, it's all about that prep work. Yes, it is gonna be dependent on what clear coat you actually get Products will vary and results will vary, but it's all about that prep work. If the surface underneath the clear coat isn't nice and smooth, then you're not gonna get a nice shiny finished surface. Both of these red hood helmets are the exact same red. That's it. This is the Duplicolor, Duplicolor Metal Cast Red. One just has the 1K clear coat over it, and the other is just a matte clear coat, but they're the same exact red. We have the exact cans I used right here, and I know this is about the Hellbat, but I really wanted to show this because this is just a clear example of that final finishing piece. This is just a matte finish 1K clear by Duplicolor, and this is the high gloss finish, which I've been using on a lot of my projects, including my suit. This is the same red I used on my suit, and I wanted to finally do a red hood helmet like that. But as some of you have already seen, we have the two finished helmets here. This isn't some crazy special gloss black. This is literally Krylon Fusions all in one gloss black and it took this 1k clear coat 
like a champ, like some paints do. Now others will react poorly and there's sometimes nothing you can do about it. Again, like I say in other videos, you need to test it out. That's just the standard Rust-Oleum metallic gold I also use on my suit and I know it can take the 1K clear coat. A nice gloss finish like this is truly just the cherry on top of a project and I think it just lends to so much more detail. I am blown away with the clarity that this left me with. You can actually see the camera in there. And it probably could do for a buff and wet sand, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't really want to risk ruining it, and I'm very happy with this finish. Now, with the helmet painted, let's talk about what I used for this lens. This is a really cool plastic tint film from someone named Icon Props on Etsy, and I'll link that stuff down below. Um, I'm going to be honest, I ordered a sheet of this because I wanted to see how he made it, but I just can't quite figure it out. It's not quite a sticker. It's a little bit thicker than window tint. And I don't think I could really replicate this without a lot of R&D. And I don't want to take anything away from him. So definitely go check him out. He has a bunch of different colors. People use this stuff for like their Halo helmets. It's just a perfect cool mesh. And I do plan on using it in some other new helmets. So we'll see how that goes. Now, maybe you don't want to get that type of film or tint. I'm always a proponent of window tint for, you know, cars. I use this on my Samus helmets. I've used this on my Mandalorian helmets. And this is a two-way film. It's chrome on one side and red on the other. And if you layer it up enough and get it in like a helmet so no light's shining out of it, this will look uh, super nice. You can actually see it on my shirt how reflective it is. So you can definitely incorporate something like this, get some thin plastic. I'll link a tutorial on making uh, cosplay visors down below as well. So if you guys wanna make a separate visor for it, you can go and do that. So the original plan or the eventual idea is to make the visor light up red. How cool would that be if this just glowing in the dark? The only problem is if you put a red LED light or any LED light behind this, it doesn't shine through red unless it's a red LED. But getting a bright enough red LED in here, it might be a little bit tricky. It is something I am gonna tackle and explore later down the line, but I think this looks more than just sufficient for the time being, um, and I'm really happy with how it all turned out. Yeah, you look good. Whatever your flavor is for this helmet, uh, Hellbat, Asriel, whatever you want to paint it as, it's just a fun, simple build, and it really does stand out as a really cool um, Arkham Knight, Batman, DC kind of helmet that's gonna look really great on the shelf. And please, let me know down below in the comments if there's any other obscure DC helmets, mainly Batman, that I might be missing out on. Like I said, uh, the Marvel Universe kind of has a lot more armors and weapons and props, but I think if there's gonna be anything cool that I'm missing out on, it's probably gonna be from the Batman Universe. So please, let me know. I'd be really interested to see maybe what I don't know. And one last thing, I know it isn't DC related, it's Marvel related, but I did just finish this Sam Alexander Nova helmet. However, there isn't anything new I did to this. I've showed you guys how to paint. Same black paint I used on the Batman helmet. This is the red paint I used on my suit. There isn't anything new or crazy going on here, but if you guys are interested in a build tutorial on a helmet like this, please let me know down below. They're just... There isn't anything new that went into this that I haven't shown you guys already, but if you want a specific walkthrough on a helmet like this, I'd really be curious to know. So please, yeah, let me know. That's a wrap for this video, guys. I'm sure Bruce Wayne would be proud of this. Um, I'm really happy with how it came out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you guys have a good day.